I would kindly ask you not to downvote this video into oblivion because we are going to talk about Planet Nine. And I do not mean Pluto. I'm very sorry about this. Yeah, there are a lot of feelings in this regard. No, I'm talking about a hypothetical Planet Nine. That's not Pluto based on certain observations and why astronomers think that there is some kind of supersized Earth somewhere out there doing gravitational chaos in the solar system. So, to see how they come up with the idea, I would suggest let's dive into Universe Sandbox. And for this, we are going into a scenario where we are plotting something called the Sednoids. And there are in total currently four Sednoids. Um, in the particular colors you already see here, in the red one and the yellow ones. Now here's the inner solar system. We have here, of course, the, well, the sun. Um, and I clicked on some random asteroid or object anyway. But we have here the sun. We have also the Earth and Neptune. Neptune is on this, um, this orbit here. We have uh, Jupiter floating around and also uh, the other different objects that are here part of the solar system. Now let's make it a short stop so things are not moving too fast all the time. Now the thing is, if we zoom out from the top view, we see all the circular orbits more or less, and then we see the so-called setnoids on these three red orbits and a yellow one as well. So what are the names of these objects? Now I have my small cheat sheet here because um, I cannot remember all of these things, although it's not very, these are not a lot of objects, but the first one is of course Sedna. We don't have to search for it. Sedna is here currently. You see the orbit and also some kind of um, calculations that Universe Sandbox is doing in some preliminary steps. So we have here the object Sedna on the one hand. Then we have the other object called 20, 12 BP 113, which is this object here, also on this red orbit as well. And then we have another one with a very difficult name to pronounce. So I'm, I apologize for anybody who knows how to do it, but I don't. It's 5411132 Leleakuhonua. Yeah, it's complicated. And this comes from a German guy, right? Complicated words. Anyway, these are the three sednoids. And let's take a look at these three red orbits. What do we see here? We see that they are very eccentric. So they are have very elliptical orbits. They have also a distance. They fly away very far away from the sun. So they apohelion. So the farthest distance from the sun is very far away. It's a do dozens of astronomical units. And what you also see is that their alignment is goes more or less into the same direction, right? So what is another orbital element that defines these orbits? It's the argument of perihelion. It's like an angle between a reference, uh, a reference vector and the vector, so the, the, the arrow that points from the sun to the closest point of an orbit. So we have here only a few degrees off, and these three sednoids appear to come more or less from the same direction. And the hypothesis is that, yes, observational bias exists and everything, but this can't be random. There are Astronomers confident that this kind of alignment of the orbits is not random. It has to be due to some repetitive gravitational perturbations of a, let's call it, supersized Earth. And with supersized Earth, I do not mean another Earth where we have like intelligent life or so. No, we are talking more about the geological properties, like the size, for example, and also the mass. And with super, we mean it's larger than the Earth, but most likely smaller than the uh, gas giants in our solar system or the inner solar system. Now, this is the theory, and there are a lot of simulations we don't need to go through there. But however, there is one object called 2023 KQ14. 
and you see the alignment is almost 180 degrees away from this orbit here and i think this one is set now right yeah it's set now and the thing here is that this orbit challenges the theory of planet nine it challenges it but it does not deny it yeah there are simulations where we can see that the um there were the, that if this orbit was billions of years ago it could have perturbated in such a matter that it rotates away from their companions from their let's say astrodynamical cousins and this is the thing with the 2023 kq14 that this challenges the planet nine hypothesis what we need to do and as astronomers in the future is to make more observations to find more potential sednoids or objects that either confirm this kind of bias of the argument of perihelion or that maybe denies it yeah so we have also other objects scattered around and then we need also to do some proper simulations so long story short we currently do not know for sure if there is a planet nine or not we have evidence or we have coincidence that suggests another planet but we have also a candidate that might deny the theory what we need to do is of course to observe more because the problem is that a theory in science needs to be let's say deniable and the question is how can you deny an object and the cosmos is so vast it's challenging but it's unfortunately not our task to answer it. We will just wait what will happen in the future. I hope you learned something today about the outer solar system. And until next time, thanks for watching.